and to Vanguard Assurance. When I had my accident and though I knew about the digital payment, I was still pleasantly surprised when my claim was paid in less than 12 hours through my mobile money account. And that enabled me to do the repairs on my car just the next day. Everything was simple, fast, unique and incredible. We apologize for the technical hitch. This is Joy 99.7 FM and this is uh, the Joy Sports Track. We'll be hearing those batch of commercials shortly. But today we are looking at the fallout of the Black Stars game with Kenya. As you know, Ghana lost by a goal to nil. A lot of things have been said. We do our own rankings here in studio and we try and assess where the team went wrong and if... As a lot of people say, it's not a crisis yet because Group F has been blown wide open. It's all here on the Joy Sports track from now to the top of the hour. I'm Gary L. Smith and um, we'll be hearing from Kwesia Pia. We'll also be hearing from um, Ibrahim Tanko. We'll be hearing from you on what you think are the issues to do with the Black Stars. And uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome one of my panelists, Hans Mensa Andor. While we sort out our technical challenges... Um, on the Joy Sports track. Okay, so Hans, good afternoon good again. Afternoon, yeah, we were we were unable to get the win that we wanted in Group F to be yeah. able to take Ghana to six points. However, however, what we do know is that there were lots of comments out there on various, you know facets of the game we had live commentary here and a lot of people felt that well i mean the players were to blame a lot of people also felt that we lost the game from the bench there were others who also felt that both the players and the coach are to blame or others also feel that look it's just one of those things you can lose games against an opposition you don't expect to and it's not a crisis after all ghana is still on top of the group you know which also has kenya ethiopia and sierra leone your initial thoughts? Well, I think that I'm going to take um, a bit of what people have said um, uh, in terms of where to lay the blame. I think that a bit of it was tactical. A bit of it was also a lack of, uh, I don't want to say commitment, but a general lack of performance from the individual players. I don't think that the players individually performed to the expected level. So, yes, there was a bit of everything in there. Um, again, it is not normal that Ghana has to lose to Kenya. No disrespect to the Kenyans, but they themselves did not expect that they were going to win this game. In fact, they expected that um, the best they were going to get out of this game was a draw. However, we heard the Kenyan journalist that he interviewed last month. They talk about the fact that Kenya seemed to thrive in chaos. And that's exactly what happened. Um, having said that, um, I think that it's also important to mention that all is not lost. In fact, Ghana is, is still on top as far as that group is concerned. And so, you know, there's, there's, there's still a lot to fight for. There's still that huge possibility that the Black Stars will be um, at the African Cup of Nations 2019 in Cameroon. So, I mean, for me, I think that there was a combination of um, tactical ineptitude, for want of a better word, and the lack of performance by the players generally. So this is the Joy Sports Track. We'll be beginning the show, which is sponsored by bet138.com, and it's powered by the Joy Sports team. We'll be waiting for your thoughts. Uh, there's already a lot of them on Facebook in reaction to Kwesi Apia's comments as well. Let's hear him on Kwejo Samoa and also his selection of the players. You see, I, I don't play with names. I play with players who will be fit at a particular time. And Kojo being on the bench does not mean, you know, he's not a good player. He's one of the best players. But under circumstances, we had to 
you know, put some players in to start, and then uh, he comes on. So that's Ibrahim. Um, that's Chris Yapia speaking there on why his best player was on the bench. To give some context to the discussion, Chris Yapia and Kojua Samoa had both denied last week that the player was injured after we had gotten reports to that effect. Yeah. So the question was, why did you not start Kojua Samoa if he was not injured? Which is why what he has said. Because if the player was injured, he would have said that the player was not well. Yeah. But let's listen to his response again, yeah. just, just so that we, yeah. we understand what's going on. You see, I, I don't play with names. I play with players who will be fit at a particular time. And Kojo being on the bench does not mean, you know, he's not a good player. He's one of the best players. But under circumstances, we had to, you know, put some players in to start. And then uh, he comes on. So, Kwesiapia essentially is saying that, for example, I mean, Kojo Asamoah, we've said this in the past two, three weeks since the squad came out. Kojo Asamoah is by far one of the most accomplished players in this 21-man squad that was named. Is he not the most accomplished player? Well, just for the purposes of arguments, you know, you don't want to be I mean, too... That, that's, that's undisputable. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, um, maybe some may say on from Thomas Pate is a better player. I don't know. That's why I say one-off. So, if you have one of your most accomplished players, why do you keep him on the bench? And Chris Apia says that because of the... Ta what tactics was he playing that he wanted to put Kojua Samoa on the bench? Very interesting answer. But even more interesting is the thoughts of the coach, the assistant coach, Ibrahim Tanko, who essentially, essentially says that some of the players were not committed or are not committed. Again, it's important to get the context that this is Ibrahim Tanko, and this is Chris Yapia, who had said that or intimated that the Ayu brothers are not committed to the team, which is why they are not getting the nod. So if you've gotten a squad of 21 players supposedly committed, being in camp with them, and yet you say this, leaves us to ask a couple of questions. Let's hear from Ibrahim Tanko now. Honestly speaking, very disappointed in some of them because um, they play like there's nothing at stake. And if you saw the body language of some of the players, it's very, very bad. So. I think um, we, the technical team, also have to watch the game again and then we have to talk to them because we have to let them know that this is the national team, it's for all Ghanaians. So if you think if you can come and do what you want and go and expect us to call you again, there's nothing like that. Everyone has to bring him. Um, everyone has to prove himself that he wants to play with the national team. Hey, your remarks, the head coach yourself and the technical team must be very disappointed with the outcome of today's game. Oh, very, very disappointed because, I mean, we went to Ethiopia uh, for three days and we saw the training they did and we believe that if we came here, they are going to give all their best. But it's not the case when we look at the game. The way some of them play, we were very disappointed. Coach Ibrahim Tanko speaking, the assistant of the team. That interview was done by Benedict Ousu in Nairobi. Benedict literally just landed from the plane and he's here. Looks like a beating man. He needs to go to bed. But first, we need to debrief him. Benedict, thank you for joining us. Um, I mean, knowing you, the, the look on your face when you were talking to Ibrahim Tanko would have been priceless in this interview. How surprised were you that he fired his players for a lack of commitment? I wasn't really surprised uh, watching the game because uh, the players on the day didn't play, if I can put it, anything. Because if uh, you're taken to camp in Ethiopia to come for some days and then you leave for Kenya, you get the opportunity to train and even the Kenyans themselves uh, tip Ghana to beat uh, them in a game and you go into a game and play the way they played then it leaves you not to be surprised that uh, Ibrahim Tanko made those remarks and especially watching the players no need to mention names but it was very very disappointing and awful and you would think that we, we shouldn't have even spent money on these players to even go and camp in, in, Ethiopia. in, in Ethiopia probably maybe they should have gone straight to Kenya a day before and played a game or yeah. probably come to Ghana and fly for me and go and play because you look at their body it's language, actually how, how, how they play the ball. Oh, gosh. It was, it was very disappointing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were there. Um, Benedict, 
after the game, mm. it took me about five hours, you know, watch the highlights again for me to come to the conclusion. And that was my personal opinion that, mm. I mean, my, my problems with Kwesi Api are very well known. But I felt that on the day, I'd, because of the number of chances we created and they don't convert, I thought that this was one of the performances where I'd say that the players are to blame. What was the general mood like among the contingents that went there? Did they feel like we lost this game from the bench or that the players did not put in effort? Uh, this is apart from mm. what Tanku said, yeah. Well, for the very first time, you see that uh, nobody around the team was blaming the technical team, but yeah. rather the blame was on the players. Mm. Because, I mean, you look at somebody like Warriors, how many chances do you want to get in the Black Stars? Yeah. You look at Rafael Jamina. Yeah. When Jamina came, we all spoke about how he was a, a delight to watch and probably was going to be the Nesta Samwajan. And these players, Warriors and Rafael Jamina, who came on in the second half, they always make an inconsistent as someone done now at club level because of injuries look better. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> to the extent that you mean people say that a half fit Jan is better than it's, it's, a fully it's fit Warriors. And even yeah. Jordan are you. Yeah. I mean, because you look at some of the chances that they squandered, Abdul Warriors and also uh, Rafael Jamina. Jordan are you as someone Jan will easily score goes like that. And also, you look at somebody like Daniel Opari. You will say that Opari didn't start at his natural uh, position. Yeah. But Opari, we, we've known him to play at left back before. For a long time. Yeah, for a very long time, which he has excelled. And for him to also come back to the team and not play very well in that position is something that you cannot talk about. And look at Thomas Partey. Partey is one player that uh, we've all been, you know, uh, we've been happy about in recent times that Yes, we, we are getting a star, one that can hold the Black Stars and can take the team for a very long time. And then Thomas Partey now gets the opportunity when he passes a ball, Thomas Partey will look around and check his legs if he's okay. <laughs> you understand? And that you want to blame the coach? No way. Yeah. All right. But the only problem that uh, I would say I had going into the game was a starting lineup because, yes, uh, the, the, the excuse for not starting our now fault because he joined the team late and then had only a training session. One training session. Fair enough. That's a fair point. But I, I thought that uh, a, a, a Harris Nafol, who's been playing very well at club level at Colombo School and he's been scoring weekend, he's been scoring goals and playing very well, uh, should have started a game ahead of Daniel Opari. The only bright or good thing in our game on Saturday was Andy Adam. And you could see that he's one player who's been playing week in, week out at his club. So mm. the level of Andy Adam was way, way high uh, above the other players. And you could see that even uh, around the 80th minute, I thought he was going to get tired because of the rounds and the, 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 the defending he was defending. The, the guy wasn't tired and was playing very well. And even the coach admitted after uh, the, the, the game that the, the only player that for him played very well was Andy Adam. Apart from that, and probably maybe you say the goalkeeper, apart from that... It was an awful performance. Right. From the I, I'm being very, very measured in, in, in what I say bef mm. before I, I open the microphones for George and, and Hans, mm. whose salvos I've seen already, and so I know will be a bit hot, is that based on everything you have said, Benedict, is there not a chance that the Black Stars simply had an off day? Well, it could be. Mm. It could be they, they had an off day, but you have to look at the opponent and you have to look at the preparations that have gone here. You have to look at the performance of our players coming into this game. Yes, you say some are not consistent at club level, but the ones that are playing, the ones that even at club level, where when they are not getting opportunity to play games and they come to the national team, they play well. What do you say to that as well? Because look at Dan Amati. Dan Amati uh, in this season at uh, Leicester City, he's not yeah. really getting much playing sure. time, but Amati for the last five years or so since he's been in the Black Stars, which has been the same issue, anytime he comes, he plays very well he for the team. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Christian Achu, uh, who I would say he needs more playing time and also must set up because Achu, when Chris Apia brought him into the Black Stars, was a player that we were all happy and were raving about. But today, when Achu steps on the pitch to play, it, it's not the same Achu we used sure. to see. You understand? So uh, to say they had an off day, that that for me, I won't buy that. But I, I believe that they should have won the game. It, this shouldn't, we shouldn't even sit here and talk about a, a draw for the Black Stars. Right. So, um, Tanko said in the interview we just played, if you just joined us, this is the Joy Sports track. 26 minutes after one, I'm Gary Al Smith here with Benedict Ousu, who has just touched down from Nairobi after um, following the Black Stars to their defeat against Kenya. Looking at what Ibrahim Tanko says, the commitment factor, he said, you know, or he gave a very veiled threat that, I mean, you can call players for them to come and show up like this and not 
feel like there's anything at stake when wearing the national jersey. Mm. Do you think that some players, based on this performance, will get the axe just because of this poor performance against Kenya? Well, Gary, the, there's one thing we have to clarify before we go on. You know the commitments he was talking about was not as in uh, players always coming in and not showing that they are committed. But sure. he was talking about on, on the, the game, on, on game in particular. The game, yeah, yes. the game in particular. Yeah, sure. And what I see is that most of the players that played in the game, I, I won't be surprised if they are not called in the next game. Hmm. I will not be surprised because hmm. their performance disappointed the technical team. Because for them, and speaking to them, they did everything they had to do. Yeah. They did everything they had to do, only for the players to go on the pitch. Because at times, I don't get it when we want to blame a coach for uh, a player missing a chance. You understand? Because you look at how uh, Varys and Rafa Jamna played. How, how on earth would you blame Chris Yapia for that? Well, you understand? I, I, when I put this up on, on, on Saturday on my, on my Facebook, the bo- a lot of the comments I got said that, yes, granted, the players, I mean, if we are quite missed from two yards, you know, he had a yes, ball. The, yeah, he, he had instead of fear, heading yeah. into the net, he headed yeah, outside. He had um, Jamina had from nine or ten yards. Mm-hmm. The keeper was in front of him. Instead of chipping or hitting it sideways, he ballooned it over the bar. And my point was that these things, the coach really said his yeah, grandmother would have scored. Would have scored. <laughs> and um, some, a lot of people said that. But who chose the players? And I said, you see, if you do this who chose the players argument, I mean, you can bring... Maradona and Messi, they can miss chances, you know. So, aren't we being a bit too hard? What we yeah. also have to see is that we, we, when we say we're giving the players a chance, yeah, sure. you know you cannot just give a player a chance in a game or two. That's the point. Yeah, so you have to uh, probably maybe after five matches, and for some of the players, you and I know that we've given them so many chances that sure, sure, if sure. going forward, Christian Pia decides not to call them, no one will be on his head. Because for somebody like Abdul Majid Waris, if Chrissy Apia tomorrow decides not to call him for our next game, I, I'm not sure people will complain. Yeah, sure. Even Rafael Jamna himself. Since Rafael Jamna had the, the heart issue, he's not been the same player. The, same player. Yeah. the rumors of the heart issue. Yeah, yeah. he's not been the same player. Even at club level, he's now warming into the Levante team, the new team he's joined in Spain. And for the national team, and as the coach, so I perfectly and totally agree with Ibrahim Tanko that, you know, we have to look out for players that when they come on a day, they will give their best. Not players that when they come and they play, no matter the club you play, we don't have to look at that. We don't have to, you know, pamper players anymore. You understand? If players are elsewhere and they are playing very well, that we can bring them in. Let's bring them in and let them play for the nation. We shouldn't base our call-up on names, our call-up on where players are playing. If we do that, it will always work. But come that's back what Kwesi Apia has tried at, not to do, look, look to at, be fair. Look at, look at the Kenyan team. Who is your star man? Musa Mohammed and then Michael Olunga. These are guys that... Based in re- Zambia relatively, and Japan, yeah, relatively, respectively. Relatively, if you are comparing these guys to our players, you say one-on-one, they don't match the Black Stars. Sure. And this is a team that we should rip not less than 3-0. You understand? But what did they do? They proved that they can play and they exactly did that. Mm. But ours was totally different. So going forward... We, we shouldn't base our collapse on names. We shouldn't base it but, on but, but, but this squad, to be f- again, to be fair to Kwesi Apia, mm. he didn't base a, this particular collapse on names. Well, Thomas Pate is coming from where? He's coming from Atletico Madrid. No, but you see, names yeah. that are merited. Mm-hmm. That if we say names, it's like, Asamwajan has not played 30 games, but we are saying he should play. No, that, that's, that's yeah, not. Something like that. That's not, because even Asamwajan at, at the moment, there's no way... People will be happy with their coach if uh, he should invite us more than because at club level he's not playing. Yeah, you understand. So it should be based on merit, yeah. and we should look at our play yeah. because uh, national team at, football is really but, interesting. You yeah. Look at some of our players. It's you look really at some of our players. Yeah. Everything that's been happening at their club level came to bear in the game. Sure. Because you could see that this is a player who's not been getting playing time at this club level, mm. and that we can mention names. We can mention uh, from uh, the uh, defense. Maybe about five out about of eleven Dan players. Matthew, you talk about Christian Achu. Rashid Aqua was, was awesome in the game. Yeah, Apart awesome. from the chance he missed, yeah. he played very, very well. Yeah, I forgot to add that. Uh, me, f- for me, Apart from uh, Fri Aqua and the Adam, the rest of the players, probably maybe Harris Nafo also came on, but it was too late. Kujar Samoa came, was too late. And then the uh, the, the answer that uh, Ibrahim Tanko gave me after uh, asking him why Kujar Samoa didn't start, he said because the, the player came from his club with an injury and that uh, the last training, Kujar Samoa was able to train with the team, but after... He had some pains in his ankle, so they didn't really want to start him. That's why he came or, 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 or he came from the bench. So, in a nutshell, for me, it wasn't a performance that uh, we, we should be happy about. And the technical team admitted that they, they were 
utterly disappointed in some of the players, their performance. And I, I'm delighted that going forward, some of the players that got the opportunity to play in this game will not come close to the blast. <laughs> right, Benedict, thank you for your debriefing and we'll and, allow him. There's one thing I also have to add. You know, I observed that something has changed about the team. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah, so, some, something has changed. Not, not on the pitch, off the pitch. You know, previously, you, you will see a lot of management members a lot of blaster sympathizers <laughs> with the team. Now there is nothing I like, like that. that. Blaster well, sympathizers. Yeah, now the, the <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's only natural. Uh, now no, 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 there is nothing I, I like that. I think it's only natural. Now there is nothing like that. You, the the leader of delegation, uh, Alex Asante, and then uh, a representative from the sports ministry, that's uh, Mr. Otten, who is the accountant. Sure. And then Dan, Dan Kukuyabwa, the liaison uh, sports Officer, person. Yeah. yeah, they they were and and, and then the, the technical wow. team. So, no, I'm just saying that. The, what I observed that yeah. for, for a very long time following the team, what has, what has changed about the team in terms of the uh, makeup of the people that are around. around the team? Now we, we didn't see that. That's good. That's good news. I mean, I mean, if if we want a change and it's starting this way, then hell, I love it. God makes a point that, that after what? normalization, we'll go back to normal. You know? Well, I mean, <laughs> let's 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 read one is also here. Yeah, read. Yes, um, chipping. I, I think. Um, is because we don't have the FA in, in session. So so we shouldn't be too silly. No, we shouldn't silly. It could come back, but we, I'm just we, saying. But this is good. Come back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this I'm is just, good. I'm just saying that no for, for the very first celebrate time. too, but this you know why? Yeah. Because there's no FA. Yeah. You, you understand? If yes, we FA. Have FA run, you see the people. And after or post June six or post um, Anna's documentary, this happens. Then we say, okay, hallelujah. Yeah. You know, we've seen a change. But for me. This is the first time we've had a national team coach question the mentality and attitude of our players. I can't remember the last. I can't yeah. remember the last. Time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And it's good because once again the rigidity, the media rigidity associated with the Blasters was broken. Yeah, it was open for all, and Benedict could speak to Ibrahim Tanko. Yeah, Heather too. You couldn't speak to players. We spoke to Kojo. We spoke to how many players do we speak to? Yeah. You know, Daniel Opari. Daniel Opari. Opari. It was players. open and you could see that we got things from them. Sure. You know, and now they become responsible. Hitherto, coaches were made to defend players, even when they were poor. Mm. You know, with nobody striking. So with what Tanku has said, if not for the system now we have in place, we wouldn't have spoken to Tanko. Yeah, sure. And Tanko wouldn't have come. And you see, he was speaking Out on of, behalf of Ghanaians. Yeah. He said the national team is it's for Ghanaians. And we don't invite you to come and play such football. When was the last time you heard any coach, you know, slate our players for doing Open that? Open the air. Like that. You know, I think the national team should be flexible. The players should be able, we should be able to account. And I'm not saying that we should be irresponsible. I'm talking about journalists. Sure responsibly sure. we have to ask the questions and we hold, have to ask the questions hold them to why did you play this sort of football you know why did you make this substitution why didn't Kojo Asamoah start if you say he was fit we need those explanations because we we'll use your answers to as a yastic to judge you sure. in the, the next game Harris Nafo didn't start why mm. because he had joined the team on Thursday yeah. which was late I agree so he decided to go in for Yadom or you know Daniel Lopai because Harrison is also comfortable playing as left back. Mm. We saw him play as left back some time back before he shifted to sure. the right back. That was, a, you know, that was the original plan when I had, when I asked uh, Ibrahim Tanko that Harrison was going to play at left back. But because he, he didn't arrive earlier, yeah. had yeah. Uh, see, only a training session. It, it was a gamble. Team. The coach needed to gamble. Yeah, yeah, gamble and yeah. you can see that from our game from the first half. We didn't have the right Covered. back. You know, attacking. Yadam was doing his best, but Opari was not going. He was yeah. not comfortable because Opari used to play as left back some time back. And yeah. it was the same Kusia Pia who put uh, um, Opari on Mohamed Salah in the 6 1 driving in Kumasi. in Kumasi. And he tested him in that position. For a very long time, Opari was playing the national team as left back. Yeah. Home and away, the first and second leg. Mm. But it didn't work. If he had Harrison joined the team earlier, and sometimes the gamble, do I go for this player? Yeah. You know, to start even though he came in late. He mm. didn't also want to send a signal that you can come in the national team very, very late when you are invited because Ebenezer Ofo is based in the MLS and he also came earlier. Yeah. So why didn't you come earlier yeah. to join the team? Yeah. The signal he was sending, but it didn't work out. Yeah. But I'm, I'm happy with Tanko, the reaction. I'm happy with um, the way we're handling things now. And what, trying, what about the Kujua Samoa explanation he gave no, to the The Kujua Samoa explanation, I, I didn't think he was going to play. You oh, know, okay. I didn't think he was going to play. At all? Perfect. I didn't think he was going to play. Why because not? of the situation psychologically 
he was not fit to play. What am I saying? This is a player who's got heads. He's just coming back. At Inter, he's regular. And coming back into the national team, if you speak to some of the boys, this is off the pitch case I'm talking sure. about, Gary. Most of them feel most of their injuries is as a result of coming to the Black Stars. Yeah, sure. What happened to Mohamed, uh, Rabiu Mohamed? Yeah. On the back of a Black Stars, you know, he's lost. Form, he, he got lost. What happened to Isaac Bossa? You know, Opo please Kwajima. feel, you know, and psychologically, we need to maybe demystify some of these things that injuries can happen, not as a result of your national team. You know, Emmanuel Boatin just came. Just before the season started, he got an injury. Yeah. But not for the national team. Not for the national team. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the boys... See, there was a player who told another player not to play for the Blasters because he was going to get injured. And this <laughs> was a, this is a boy who is not played for the Dutch national team. Yeah. And the Blasters player told him that. Wow. So you see, the psychological aspect, not all things can be made public. Yeah, sure. Because if Kojo comes, aggravates the injury and does not play, I know. I know there's, Look, like, I have to add something. Uh, yeah. Has our country? You know, uh, Kujasa also mentioned to me, which uh, he stated on record, that uh, he was coming with an injury, and because he had given his word to Ghanaians that he was returning this September, yeah. that's why he even came. Okay. You understand? He wouldn't have even come, but because he gave his word that he was coming this September, he didn't want to disappoint the coach, didn't want to disappoint Ghanaians. That's why he came, and then he felt that uh, I, I'm sure. Uh, that I didn't ask him, but I'm sure he he was also uh, in the process of deciding whether he should play or not, or okay. starting a game. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure he, definitely the coach will ask him because at the last training session, when he, after training, he came off and then uh, an ice was wrapped around his ankle. Yeah. So you could see that he was feeling uneasy, uh, easy, some sort of easiness in his ankle. So I I wasn't really surprised that he came on in the second half. But for him not to start, I think that it was a good thing. Probably, maybe. You see, you see, the problem somebody like me has with Chris Yapia is mm. that so when you had an opportunity to explain, the microphone is put, just say it. But instead, this is what you say. You know, and that is, you know, the communication problem we say about Chris Yapia. Benedict, I mean, sometimes it's, it's, Red one, it's let's, easy. Let's like, see it as you, know, let's you, see it as you see, this 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 thing, uh, re, um, Benedict had just explained it makes total perfect sense. But instead, you are given the microphone by the BBC, and this is what you yeah, say I, I don't play with names, I play with players who will be fit at a particular time. And Kojo being on the bench does not mean you know he's not a good player, he's one of the best players. But under circumstances, we had to. You know, put some players in to start, and then uh, he comes on. So, I, I don't know, do you get the impression that he's telling you that the player is not fully fit? Or he's saying that ta it's a tactical reason? Like, Gary, I mean... You know, is it clear? For, I don't know. For me, quite apart from Chris Yapia's communication, it's, it's, it's becoming stuff of legend. I have a problem with the whole, you know, Kojo Asamo was carrying an injury and he wanted to disappoint Ghanaians and, you know, all that. It's, it's a bit problematic. Look, you either fit... Oh, yeah, not fit. fit. It is that simple. For what will happen if Koja Zamora says that, well, I wanted to come as promised, but I am not fit. The fundamental question is this What was the benefit to us as Ghanaians when he came? What did we gain? The Wanyama case, for example. No, but what did we gain, fit. really? Wait, you know, he wasn't fit. Waiting to again. Come. Wanyama <laughs> didn't come. He said he was not fit to come. Yes. You know, you needed, he needed to travel. For us to observe him, yeah. Yeah. you know, for so with him, that's understandable. In, you have to come because he, he, you see, player, you see, Hugo Lloris, Hugo thing, Lloris picked up an injury. Uh -huh. Yes, he went to the France national team yeah. to report. Yeah, so that, because that's what they do. I get that. I get that. I'm coming. Here's a difference. I'm coming. Here's a difference. Here's a difference. I'm coming. He cited Hugo Lloris. And here's a difference. Has been called. He goes to be assessed. So he had to come. He had to no, come. he had been I'm, called. I'm, I'm, listen, me, my, point, been called my point. My point. My point is this, Benedict. The national. I'm coming. You no, know, I want to make this point before you continue. The the national call up is not done a week before the game. Two. You understand. <laughs> so the guy had already <laughs> been called. So other other call. players were called up, got injured, and pulled off, pulled out. That's a no, different the, the injury, situation. But my, no, I'm coming. My my point is this. Yeah, my point is this. So he came. Yes. You were injured. Yeah. You came. You came to be assessed. Why was his name even on the team sheet? We are meant to understand that the, the boy was coming. No, he is not fully trained. It's about the But then he trained. No, Hans. The boy let's, trained. No, let's, right, we were here. I'm coming. Let, 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 let me finish. No, no, let me finish. Let me finish. We had reports. Let us finish. We had reports. Kojasamo had gotten injured at training. And he debunked them. It was debunked. 
that hey, I'm, <laughs> see, I'm going to play the game. No, and that is the problem. It wasn't debunked. No, it wasn't debunked. He didn't get injured at training. So listen, the guy said that. Yeah. So 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 so. But he did say he was fit. Did he not? No, no, no. The coaches confirmed he was fit. Did they not? No one confirmed. There's a difference here. If he picked up an injury at training. And he came to camp, and even the statement from Dan Kukiewa was very, very explicit. He said, he said he came to camp with the injury, uh-huh. right? So when he came, he suffered an injury after the game. Yeah. And he came, they assessed him. He could train all right, but then he was not 100% fit. Match and fit. that's the case. The case is that he's either he plays through the pain barrier or... He comes and comes. And that assessment could he have been you done know. before the game to determine whether. Because oh, see, one could just someone coming. One could just someone came on. But yeah, you remember, remember, remember the stadium. Casting, you one could just someone came situation. on. Oh, hold on, I'm coming. One situation. could just someone came on in the second half. Mm-hmm. You tell me that even from the stands, you couldn't tell that the player was, was not fit. You could tell. I was sitting right here in the studio and I mentioned that, look, this guy is not fit. And it was clear. So, so your point so is that he shouldn't have come. He shouldn't have played at all. Even if he was coming for us to assess him, what business did his name have? On the team sheet, but the guy no, trained. Have the last training oh, session. No, but the fact that you trained doesn't mean your name has to be on okay. the team sheet. Okay, okay. See, right. But the next, the Casim. No, look at the Casim whole situation. He got injured. He got injured a day before they will leave for camp. For the national team camp. Yeah. So that case, you can quickly get in another player, a late call up. But could just some situation. The injury was there. He came to camp, trained. It's not as if the guy didn't train. He trained. He trained. He trained with the team. And then the last but training session, he oh, just wasn't fit. But I don't know why we're even bringing the point. No, but no. The, when you're trying, no, not fit. You see, the guy uh, has not been ruled out. <laughs> what is the definition of not being fit? He's <laughs> not been ruled out no, for let's say. Then why do you not start? No, no, no. Okay. no so then why have not start? Man. No, but you see, because he's case, not fully fit. No, if you're not fully what, fit, what? You see, I don't want to. I want to count this. You know, what benefit is it for us? If Kojja someone comes to the Black Stars and he's put on the bench, only for him to come in somewhere in the 80th minute and give us. Zero. Oh, but Hans, you see, it's not really for me. It's not a straightforward thing like you came, yeah, you're not fit, yeah. you have to start. You yeah. see, you have to also talk to the player and find out. There is a player. We have twenty players in camp. Clubs. Correct. No, Inter listen. Mario. He just swapped. He moved to Inter. He's regular for Inter Milan. In fact, their key, one of their key players this season, has been Kojo. Yeah. And if he starts fully and aggravates the injury. He's going back in how many days? But it's the same point I'm making. Today. What, what, when he so came on in the second half, putting your body in the case you're playing against Brazil. No, but it's the same you know, but, I want to start. See, Red One, it's, it's the same, same point I'm making. <laughs> the guy wasn't fit. Yeah, but we don't need to no, play him. every time to play. Hans, you don't need to. So, so we'd rather have we'd rather have a half fit could just someone come on. How many half fit players did you have in a team? Could just someone was a half fit player. Yes, he wasn't that's fully one fit. out of so, how many. So what was he doing okay. in the game? Oh, oh Hans, I just want to. How is he not coming? That's it. So are we saying that without could just someone should have played? That's it. All right. So if you have, what is the game? We've made your point. A simple one. Could just someone play and we lost? So what would have been the difference? Could just someone wasn't the reason why we lost? I'm not saying that was the reason. I'm saying that he played and we still lost. Did we want to aggravate? That injury. He came on in the eighth minute. Guy, he still could have gotten injured. How many? Okay, so hold Guy, on. So if, you're coach, if you're a coach and Kuja Samoa comes to camp, okay, with an injury, he trains and then he's not able to complete the training session. Your last training, he trains fully and then after he complains of easiness in his ankle. Yeah. And you have Thomas Party. Who do you play? Would you play Kuja Samoa? You play Thomas Party. You play Party. Absolutely, that's it. That's it. No. <laughs> but, you see, the oh reasons the goodness. reasons given for keeping Kojasa on the bench, only f- for him to come in the second half, yes. are that he's not fully fit. And I am saying it. Then he shouldn't even have been in the team at all. On the team sheet at all. Because, okay. you see, we took, I'm coming, we took 21 players. Only 18 had their name on the team sheet. The other players were fully fit. <laughs> but had their names... Not on the team sheet. Right. So that's, what that's, that's, the we purpose, that's the purpose of, of programs like this. We have divergent opinions. You, Benedict, we don't have divergent opinions and it's up to listeners to decide. I'll read lots of comments from the listeners. I mean, I have quite a bit, more than 50 on Facebook and Twitter. But let's hear the full version of Coach Ibrahim Tango's interview with Benedict. So we've heard the first part where he questions the commitment of the players here is more from the assistant coach of the Black Stars. Yeah, well, I think it's a wake-up call for us because um, I believe that some of the players think it's going to be easy to win all the games because of the group we are in. But I think today's game has uh, shown us a big lesson that uh, there is no minor in football at the moment. So I think uh, we have to... Uh, prepare very well for next month so that uh, we will have a, a 
two games against Sierra Leone, and then we try to win those matches, then we are secure. But I think it's a very bad uh, day for us to win. Your players are too on the day. Wasn't encouraging at all. Yes, it's true. I mean, I was, I mean, honestly speaking, very disappointed in some of them because um, they play like there's nothing at stake. And if you saw the body language of some of the players, it's very, very bad. So I think um, we, the technical team, also have to watch the game again and then we have to talk to them because we have to let them know that this is the national team, it's for all Ghanaians. So if you think if you can come and do what you want and go and expect us to call you again. There's nothing like that. Everyone has to bring him. Um, everyone has to prove himself that he wants to play with the national team. Hey, your remarks, the head coach yourself and the technical team must be very disappointed with the outcome of today's game. Oh, very, very disappointed because, I mean, we went to Ethiopia uh, for three days and we saw the training they did and we believe that if we came here they are going to give all their best but it's not the case when we look at the game the way some of them play we were very disappointed and as i said we have to i mean think twice and then we have to let them know that the national team is not for a few people everyone has to show that he wants to stay in every game why didn't Kojo have some start in today's game? I mean, we all know that Kojo have a minor problem that he came with from his club. And the last uh, two days before the game, he didn't train all the training. And yesterday he did, but he, I mean, the last training is not so I mean hard training that you can assess him. So we decided to... I let him start from the bench and I think it's because the last 15 20 minutes for him is okay I think. so from now we've got other games to go we're still optimistic that we can make it because people have expressed fear after watching this game I don't think there is a need for us to be fear because we still have four games we are playing two next month and then we will play Ethiopia and then Kenya will come. So I think, as I said earlier, this is a wake-up call for us. In terms of quality, there's no doubt that we have quality than them, but everyone has to prove on the field of play. Mm. So this is what we are going to tell them. We will monitor all of them. There is no one who has a position in the team now. You can, nobody can tell me that he's, he has to come always. So if you play very good in your club, we think that you can help. Fine, if we think that maybe we have to try someone, that's also okay for us. But I think they have to know that this is a national team. It's not a club that some few can decide to play what they want. Ibrahim Tanko speaking there in full to Benedict Sudan Kwa, who has just arrived from Nairobi and spent a better part of what, three quarters of an hour. That's many thanks to him. You go and get his rest now. It's been a long journey after leaving the country to cover the Black Stars. So, your thoughts on everything that's gone on in the last couple of days, including the interviews we've played. Very interesting. You can get us on at Joy Sports GH on Twitter. The hashtag is Joy Sports. Yawafun says, From day one, I didn't support the Second World War of Christia Pia. Give him a club, but not a national team. Francis Yaselomi agrees and says, Exactly my point as well. Kwame Obing Amwaku says, This is what I call unbelievable talk. Sometimes this coach makes those of us who champion for his comeback look and sound so wrong. Caleb Nyamiche Kofi says that Charlie, it be like your man, the English way, you know, if he talk well, they should have asked him in three, he could have explained better. I think his problems are with communication. So that is from Caleb Nyamiche Kofi as well. Nana Kwame Akom says this is the same coach who said he was waiting for the USA players to get tired before he introduced our best player during the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. Clifford Osafo says, This coach is bereft of ideas. His technical acumen is below power. 
he is simply not a national team coach material. Anina Rosemond says that uh, Kusiapia is tactically not good. Anna Young said a campianti. Um, I hope I got the pronunciation right. Says that this guy. Uh, right, not, that's a very really f- friendly comment. Conlan Samuel says that I have said this and I stand by it still that Chrissy Apia is not very good. Like Kinsen would be a better coach any day than Chrissy would ever be. Oluwa Mutiu says, I wonder why Chrissy Apia still has the Black Stars to manage. A player who is a regular even for the new team he joined and you are saying what? That the guy is not committed. Jordan is better than majority of the players you featured and you still with him on the sidelines. Meanwhile, Kujua Samoa was also on the bench. You could have fielded him for a longer period. Yusha Al Hassan Naju says that it's like keeping Messi on the bench and playing Sadiq Adams when you need a vital away goal. And as Hienyo Ayensu Senior also weighs in with his comment, he says, What a tactical response by Kwesi Apia. In fact, I blame Nyantichi for the second coming of Kwesi Apia. Solomon Elik Plim Ahaja says that Kwesi Apia is not good enough to handle the Black Stars. Um, Taya Karachi, I hope I got the pronunciation right, says that Europeans sometimes inject players to get results from them. That is why I support Real Madrid and I don't have time for the Black Stars. Michael Akeljine Azubere says that Kujia Samoa wasn't fit at that particular time. That's all. And that is the end of the matter so i've read about what, 12 15 comments and none too charitable with kc up here i don't know if that's just be i mean the sampling of the views i have here but please reach us um 0244 on your thoughts on on the game and kc up here's response ibrahim tanko slating the players for a lack of commitment um <laughs> some of the comments on twitter are even more not not very friendly to Chrissy yeah. Apia there. Hans, the Hans has been very vocal. I, I, for me, you see, Gary, some of the things that, first of all, you if you're a Ghanaian, you'd not be happy with the results. And to get explanations that you are getting from Chrissy Apia and from Ibrahim Tanku. And I'll come back to this Kweja Samoa issue because, again, like I mentioned, you're either fit or you are not. There's that, look, we, we, we sort of tell lie to ourselves that he's half fit and he's... There's nothing like half fit. You're either fit... Or you're unfit. You understand me? You don't tell me you put a player on the bench because he's half fit. What is half fit? <laughs> no, you tell what is half fit. No, but we see, we see for giving club football, we see players who are half fit and we say that, oh, he's half fit but he's playing through the, the pain barrier. And what, what, do you, what do you get from those players? Well, you see, the thing, again, Hans, I, see, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really see, trying to err on the side if of the devil's If I get, I'm coming. Because someone is a world-class player. In the words of, let me just read a comment somebody just made, just to make my point. Yes. Um, the name is Hajanas Hajanas on Twitter he says that Kwisiapia is not inspirational at all for me if even Kujia Samoa was half fit his name alone would have put some fear into the Kenyans I'm sorry you see no I'm sorry Gary if you put the name there that doesn't provide results with the ball what have you done right really Very if you put if you put a name that is not fit on the field of play mm. And it doesn't give you the result. What we we are way past the times when names like Abedi Pele, names like Roger Miller put fear. No, by, by hands, you we are in time when, I mean, when you when you interview footballers, and again you watch these documentaries, especially of the the, the, the clubs outside the country, national teams outside, and they tell you all the time. The last one I remember very well involving the Black Stars was the Egypt's game. You know, when I went to Egypt, I spoke to a couple of the Egyptian players, mm-hmm. and they said when they saw the team sheet of our, the sex one against them in Kumasi, when they saw Asian was back, Quick point. Quick Calvin was back, this person they, was back, they were, they were fearing. That's it. Were they fit? Yes. If we're looking for names to put fear in the Kenyans, we probably should have brought us a Mwajan. Period. Mm. It's that simple. Good point as well. We can bring in a player who is not fit. Look, for me, I think that they put Koja Samoa's career on the line mm. by bringing him on. When, he was, when they claimed he was half fit because he could have aggra- aggravated it. You understand me? Look, it doesn't take one hour for a player to get injured. It takes one contact. Just one. Yeah. And Red One named a lot of them. Rabiu. Why is Opoku Yeah. Why is Opoku Ajiman's career is, is done? And Benedict was also not happy with Partey's performance because it was clear that he was afraid 
back yeah. okay so i'm coming back to the point back to the 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 the, the rhetoric from coach Ibrahim Tanko about the players commitment when you bring Kojo Samoa who is not fit to come and play do you think you'll be committed in the way he plays do you think he's going to commit himself to challenges do you think he's going to commit himself to you know physical confrontations do you think you apply himself he simply won't okay all right many thanks to Benito Sudan Kwato Redwan Ibrahim Asante who passed through also to Hans Mensa and the Joy Sports track is powered by bet138.com if you are a betting man or woman or lady or guy. You probably want to check out bet138.com. It's licensed and regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. You can visit any of the retail shops around Kukumlele here in Alajo, Caprice, Kaswa, Jamestown, Taifa, Sotum, and Teshi. Feel the taste of better odds, endless markets, and prompt payments. It's live in play betting. There are other games from across Africa. Let's get a quick wrap of that here on the Joy Sports Track. Senegal were held by a resilient Madagascar as the game ended 2 all in a Group A match in Antananarivo, with Equatoria Guinea defeating Sudan 1-0 in the other Group A match. Guinea won 1-0 over the Central African Republic, a result pulled with Cote d'Ivoire's 2-1 win over Rwanda, sees Guinea top of Group H with 6 points from 2 games. Central African Republic and Cote d'Ivoire are joined second with 3 points while Rwanda are last with 0. Morocco have picked up their first three points in Group B after they defeated Malawi 3-0 in Casablanca. The win sees the Atlas Lions move to second place on three points. Clarence Sidov's Cameroon lead the pool on four points after they drew 1-1 away to bottom of the lock Comoros. Tunisia beat Eswatini, formerly Swaziland, 2-0 at the Movuzo Sports Center on Sunday. The result, combined with Egypt's 6-0 thumping of Niger, takes Tunisia to the top of Group J with six points from two games. Egypt are in second place with three points. The Super Eagles defeated Seychelles 3-0 in the Group E qualifier with South Africa drawing 0-0 with Libya. Togo are still winless after playing to a goalless draw against Benin in their second Group D match of the qualifiers. So Algeria's 1-1 draw against the Gambia sees Togo stone last on the standings with one point to their name. So that's Moses Ebo with that report of some of the topical games from across the continent. I'm Gary Al Smith. Thank you for listening and we'll be back next week. These whistle sounds when the beautiful flicks and tricks account for the goals and wins. When the tempers flare and the passion is in overdrive. 